Shooting vintage rifles and shotguns is a great fun. And it's even more exciting if you're shooting the holy black powder cartridge. In most cases I'm using brass cartridges, but today I'm going to reload some paper cases with the traditional way, using 19th century tooling. Vintage shotgun partage hunting, a few words that mean a lot to the Hungarian black powder shooters and hunters, because this is the event that starts the hunting season and ends the sports shooting season. And this year was very busy for us, because we organized a long range world cup, we took part at the world championships, so this was full of black powder, but we were eagerly waiting for this event to happen. But before I start talking about the beauty of hunting with vintage firearms, let me thank you for your support, your donation through Patreon, or buying our authentic Civil War American cartridge boxes and Berkshire cartridge formers or US Arsenal stadias, or rubber printing place for Arsenal cartridge bundles, or flintlock tools, or powder measure sets. They are all a great help for keeping the quality of the Cap and Ball YouTube channel high. Without you, this would be much, much different and much, much harder. So thank you very much again. This event is organized by the Hungarian Black Powder Shooters and Hunters Association, and they call it vintage because this is not only for muzzle loaders, but also for shotguns that were manufactured before 1945, and if you bring your shotgun with cartridges loaded with holy black powder, then you are more than welcome. I have been preparing for this event with patterning my muzzle loading shotgun, which is a Wesley Richards percussion shotgun made in the 1840s. It's a beautiful arm, and the way I pattern the shotgun you can find on my YouTube channel as well. The link is under this video in the description area. But this year I decided to use two shotguns. This year I managed to get my hands on a beautiful Zaurenzon Handrilling. It's a combination gun that has three barrels. Okay? Two shotgun and one rifle barrels. And this beautiful Handrilling was made sometimes in the end of the 19th century, so it makes a beautiful companion for such vintage shotgun hunting. Zaurenzon is one of the oldest gun making companies that is still in business. Actually, they have been making firearms since 1751 in Zul. The drilling I have in my hands has three bores two 12 gauge shotgun bores with a cartridge length of 65 mm. This is shorter than the 12 by 70 cartridge, which is, let's say, a popular cartridge also today. This was a custom by the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. And the rifle bore has a special caliber as well. It is 10.4 by 47 R cartridge, which is Italian Rev Vetterli cartridge, or it is called also the 10.4 Vetterli cartridge, but it is not rim fire as the Swiss model, but it's center fire which is easier to reload. But the cases are hard to find, so the sighting in of the, of the rifle bore will be a later task of mine. The drilling system was very popular by the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. It was so popular in Hungary that the old hunters actually criticized the young ones, the drilling hussars, for giving up the old traditions for the sake of the three months dragon, the drilling. The drilling was indeed a capable hunting arm for big game also, because the two shotgun barrels with a single ball cartridge were capable of hunting big game at short ranges. And you also had a rifled bore for longer ranges. Well, my shotgun has a cylinder bore, the right one is a cylinder bore, which means it is good for shotgun shooting single ball cartridges, but the left bore, it is fully choked, that is of course not good for shooting single ball cartridges. Drillings are often criticized for being too heavy to be used as a shotgun. Well, this is not true for my shotgun or my drilling because it is only 3.1 kilograms in weight and the balance is very good. By the end of the 19th century, Zauer was not anymore using Damascus barrels, but good quality, durable castile made by Krupp. Their guns were made from three different steels. The rifles were made of special Gewerlaufstahl, or special rifle bore steel, while the shotgun barrels were made from two type of steels. The ordinary Fluss Stahl or mild steel was used for the normal quality guns, while the Guss Stahl or cast steel was used for their higher quality items. Altogether, Zauber was always known for their simple elegance. Their guns lacked the rich engravings of the contemporary Central European gun makers. My drilling is made of Fluss Stahl, meaning it was a middle priced item by its age.
The action is quite interesting. First of all, the bridge opens with pressing the lever on the left side of the frame. The key on the top of the bridge is actually a selector between the shotgun and the rifle bores. Turn to the left, the rifle bore is fired. A good shot is supported by a single set trigger system. The barrel has a folding rear side that is only necessary for the rifle bore. The hammers are secured against accidental discharge, meaning that they can only engage the firing pin when the trigger is pulled. My drilling was born at the black powder ridge, and according to the proof marks on the rifle and the shotgun barrels, it was not reproof for nitrocellulose powders, so I'm not going to use anything else, just holy black powder. It is inferior to, compared to smokeless powders, of course, but you know what? I don't care. I love the smoke and I love the dirt that comes after. Let me show you now what the proof marks of the drilling show about the history of this gun. Let's start with the shotgun barrels. 13 per 1 tells us that the bore size is 13.1 gauge. A circle number 12 is the proof that it is chambered for 12 gauge cartridges. W indicates a choked bore. S indicates a shotgun barrel. 78 per 41 is the caliber of the rifled bore. U is the single shot proof mark. The two eagles prove two repeated pressure tests. Letter G indicates a rifled bore. The caliber of the rifled bore is 78 per 41. Ha! <laughs> That's a strange caliber sign. This kind of caliber marking was used at the end of the 19th century and the beginning, the first decade of the 20th century, only in Germany. And uh, it is connected to the gauge system, like in the shotguns. This 78.41 shows the number of equal size lead round balls that could be cast from one pound of pure lead. But be careful because the one pound here is not the British pound, the 454 grams, but it is the German metric pound. It is 500 grams, so it is a bit different. Well, I'm not going to use smokeless powders to reload the cartridges, even if it was a light cartridge. I'm going to first reload paper cartridges using original 19th century tooling. Now, this will be fun. Back in the good old days, paper cases were the only option for reloading shot cartridges. Later came the brass and copper cases, but still the paper shell has its romance. Reloading these cases is not a hard task, and it is especially fun if you do it on original tools, like this one, made by Hoxley in Sheffield. This company produced a wide range of accessories and functioned on 75 Carver Street from 1840 to 1946. The procedure starts with priming the case while we resize the inner diameter of the shell. This tool is also made in the 19th century. Now comes filling the powder. My charge here is 75 grains of 3F Jagdschwarzpulver. The powder is choked with a felt wet and it is pressed in place with the piston. The shot here is 2.9 mm shot, loaded for hunting pheasants and partage. The weight is 33 grams. The shell is closed with an overshot wed. The whole charge then is compressed with the piston. Now it is time to cream the case. The hand cranked roller folds back the mouth of the case as it is turned in the brass tube. And here you go, your cartridges are ready for hunting. Sizing the outer diameter of the case was often necessary, as the paper absorbs humidity and could become hard to chamber. Now it is time to pattern this shotgun with these beautiful paper cartridges. 
We are going to do it the same way as we did with the muzzle loader, the old traditional British way, placing a sheet of paper with a 75 cm circle in the middle to 35 yards. And we are going to count the pellets and determine the exact percentage of shots within this 75 cm circle. Right board. Left board. They seal well and it's reusable. Let's check it out. And I really have to say that this is also okay for skid shooting because there are just no spots where the where the clay could exit this group. I love it, I love it. The group is a bit higher, but probably I was aiming a bit higher as well, so that's not, that's not really a problem of the cartridge, but the paper cartridge is very, very tight with the cylinder board. In case of the right board, the pattern was nice and even. 76% of the pellets hit within the 75 cm circle. Let's check the other board. Interestingly, the choked board produced a bit lower percentage of 63%, but the group was still good. Paper cases for cartridges are very hard to find today, and actually after 3 or 4 reloads they wear out. The paper just won't stand more reloads. So, for continuous use, it is much better to use brass cartridges, like the ones here. These are produced by Magtech, and they are primed with large rifle or large pistol primers, and they will last forever if you take care of them and you clean them after shooting, of course. Let's see now how I reload my brass case cartridges. Reloading the brass cases is a much easier task. If you use it always in the same chamber, no resizing is needed. Just clean them in hot soapy water immediately after use. We start with priming the cases using the same tool as in the case of the paper shells. Now comes the powder, 75 grains of 3F Jagdschwarz pulver. These cartridges are loaded the same way as I do it with my muzzle loading shotgun, so instead of felt wet, I'm adding corn wet as a filler. Now comes a thin cardboard wet to separate the filler from the shot. And there comes 33 grams of 2.9 mm shot. We finish it with an oversized, hard, tight-fitting overshot bed. If you want to waterproof it, cover it with a thin layer of lac. And we are ready to go. Now it is time to go, ladies and gentlemen, and check the pattern of these brass cartridges from the Zauer and Zon shotgun. They seal well. And this is the right board, the cylinder board, ladies and gentlemen. And the pattern is very nice. It is quite even. There are no spots where a, a pheasant or a partridge could exit this group. The cylinder right board produced a hit ratio of 64% at 75 yards with a nice even pattern. And this is the left, the choked board, ladies and gentlemen, and the pattern is very tight. I love that. It's even and tight. It's centered. Well, I was aiming at the dead center of this circle, which means that probably I could use it for 40-45 yards as well, which is good for a shotgun. This is perfect for hunting. I love the group of both bores. The pattern of the choked bore was surprisingly tight. 87% of the pellets hit within the 75 cm circle. I'm a precision shooter, ladies and gentlemen. I'm much better with non-moving paper targets than these flying things, clays and birds, stuff like that. So before each and every single hunting season, I go out and practice to renew my skills in shooting clay. So ladies and gentlemen, let's do this now. Let's break some clays with the old Zauer and Zon hand drilling. 
The first thing to try were the paper shells. This kind of shooting is very far from the Olympic skeet and trap, but some of the clays can simulate well the changing circumstances of hunting situations. No less. Szerethető. And there goes the brass cartridge. Szépen követed, rajta vagy. Van, ugyanazt csináltad követésnél. Szép. I think we can state now that this scatter gun is still doing its job properly, just as it was doing it back in the end of 19th century. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go out and hunt some grey partridge in Hungary with friends. This is Hungary, end of October 2022. We've been long-time friends in this team for many decades shooting black powder together. This is a community event organized by the Hungarian Black Powder Shooters and Hunters Association. It is the official closing of the sports shooting season and the start of our black powder hunting season. There are no huge numbers of shot game here, but the time spent together is priceless. Partridge nearly disappeared from Hungary decades ago, but it was the hunters who saved them. Many years of protection and reintroduction in the past years resulted that today, in many areas, natural populations appeared. To be honest, it does not really matter if you have a muzzle loader or breech loader. For us, the most important question is how you hunt, because that makes the real difference. When you hit the field with a charge that you develop for your gun, it gives a special value to the hunt. The effort spent perfecting the charge will surely pay off. If you miss, you can be sure that there is no other factor to blame than yourself. 
but it also gives a great confidence that is important for a fast and clean kill. The hunt ends with giving respect to the game. The birds are divided between each participants of the hunt, including the beaters and the leaders of the dogs, as they are just as important for the driven small game hunt as the hunters. This is not the last such event of this year. This little team sticks together and meets every month to spend a day or two with shooting or hunting. Most enjoyable way to spend the weekend.
So ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the story that started this year in June with the muzzle loading shotgun and then later carried on with this beautiful vintage black powder cartridge shotgun. It was a beautiful day hunting partage and pheasant and I really have to say that uh, this was quite successful for me. I had 8 shots and out of the 8 shots I had 5 hits which is much better than, I, than I, what I usually do. And uh, this is solely because of these beautiful vintage guns. It's fun. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to the Cap and Boy YouTube channel. If you like what I do, then please subscribe, comment, like, share. That will help our channel grow. Up until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.